The new Supra's design is... Why don't any new cars have many? Cars are too big. Cars have no cars. Cars are large. 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 As a car enthusiast myself, I'm with you. Nothing beats the feeling of being connected to a car when you're driving it. But do modern cars really lack those qualities? Are modern cars really less cool than older cars? Do cars actually suck now? Everyone's got a romanticized view of the past when it comes to cars, but people tend to look past the major issues and flaws those cars had. Sometimes I wish I could look past my own flaws. Plus, there are like a million different new cars. Is it really fair to lump them all together? We're gonna hear what some people on the internet have to say about modern cars and try to look at it from a different perspective, with an open mind. If you love cars, hit that like button. If you don't like cars, hit that subscribe button. And maybe we can change your mind. Cars are boring now. Every car looks the same. It's true, modern cars have similar styling, especially sedans. Some of it has to do with trends. Some of it has to do with safety regulations, but most of it has to do with money. Cool cars cost a lot more money to design. Many cars we see on the road are compact economy cars, which have the narrowest profit margins. If car companies spent more time and money designing an economy car that looked really cool, well, they'd have to sell it for more money and people don't want to buy an economy car that costs 40 grand. Kind of defeats the whole purpose. It's easier to produce a part that a bunch of different models can use instead of one individual part for each car. This is why Lexuses all have the same grille or why you instantly know any Mercedes from the headlights. Plus, you know, car companies straight up copy other car companies. Take the EK Civic, for example, but when you put it next to an Elantra and squint your eyes, you can't really tell which is which. Nowadays, the Civic looks different from a lot of different cars. It looks like a freaking alien spaceship from Independence Day. The truth is, yes, many modern cars do look super similar and many of them are very boring, but we have access to so many models nowadays that you can't just come out with some big generalized statement like all cars are boring because they're not. That thing getting bigger, look huge, don't it? Cars are too big now. There are a few reasons why. One reason cars are getting bigger is because of stricter safety standards. Airbags, safety cells, crumple zones, all that stuff needs space. In the past, cars had less protection so they could be smaller. Now they're bigger and safer, like me. Another reason is bigger cars are held to different fuel efficiency standards. Nowadays, car companies use loopholes in those laws in order to pass stringent emission standards. Instead of making a car more fuel efficient, it is often easier to make the car bigger so it falls within the guidelines of the next tier of cars. Cars cost too much to fix. Give me a good old Chevy Big Block V8 and a hammer and it'll last too 200 years. Features that seemed futuristic only 30 years ago are now standard in even the cheapest cars. Things like ultrasonic sensors, cameras, and radar are usually installed in places that are prone to impacts, like the inside of a bumper. They're all very convenient and overall make driving much safer. But once they're broken, they're stupid expensive fixes. But modern cars are super efficient, easy to tune, and have longer maintenance intervals. So you end up saving money on the general cost of keeping a car running. Cars are becoming drivable computers, and all of that technology can be pricey to fix. But I also enjoy having 40 million songs at my disposal. If the infotainment system in my car breaks, I don't know how to fix that. I'm not a computer guy, but I'm willing to fork up the money so I can keep listening to Chocolate Starfish on my commute. Electric cars are slow, muscle cars all day, bitch. Now, come on, not true. Electric cars are the future. It doesn't matter if you agree or not, it's gonna happen. Tesla has been around since 2003, and the Model S P100D has the second fastest zero to 60s time, only behind the Porsche 918, which I might add also has a fully electric mode. Tesla might be the biggest manufacturer of electric cars right now, but it isn't the only name in the game. Ford just invested $500 million in electric truck maker Rivian. If you haven't seen this thing, it's amazing. It's got a 400 mile range. It can drive in up to three feet of water and has a three second zero to 60. If you're listening right now, Rivian, Send us one of those. Electric cars are not slow. They're very, very fast. This car would be cooler if they offered it in manual. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no way to spin this. Trust me. There are still a bunch of cool cars that offer a manual, but some iconic driver's cars like the 3 Series don't offer it anymore. But we do have DSGs or direct shift gearboxes. They're not manual transmissions, but they come with little paddle shifters that basically do the same thing. I know it's not the same, but shift times are way quicker than manual transmissions. They get better fuel economy, 
and there's no loss of torque during shifts. New cars feel disconnected. Driving a new car is like playing a gosh darn video game that I'm actually driving. I want to feel my car. This is a pretty common gripe coming from car enthusiasts, and they're not wrong. In older cars, everything had a mechanical connection to whatever it was controlling. The gas pedal ran a cable that was connected to the throttle. The brake pedal was connected to the brake booster, and the steering wheel was connected to the rack and pinion. But now, drive-by wire systems are different. They use electromechanical actuators in the car's computer to perform the same functions. There are advantages and disadvantages when it comes to drive by wire systems. Electronically controlled throttles are considerably lighter than traditional systems because they don't need as many mechanical components. They're also more precise than a throttle cable that can stretch over time. But there is often a noticeable lag from the time you hit the gas pedal to the car responding, which can make the driver feel disconnected from the car. Power steering is another reason driving can feel disconnected. Many new cars use electric motors to turn the wheels, which doesn't give as much feedback to the driver and can end up feeling numb. But in the end, it doesn't even matter. There's only one thing you should know. I put my trust. But in the end, it doesn't even matter. Older hydraulically powered steering racks give much more feedback to the driver so it's easier to feel the forces your wheels are fighting against. Hydraulic steering is powered by a belt connected to the engine which is always on. That means even when the wheel isn't turning, it's still using up power from the engine. Electric steering draws power from the battery and only activates when the wheel is turned. So that means no parasitic power loss. Look y'all, everything is becoming electronic. Cars are becoming computers and there's no way to stop it. If you like driving old cars, you can still drive an old car. If you like driving new cars, get a new car. Just know that new cars might be more reliable. A big thank you to Fixed for sponsoring this episode of Wheelhouse. Guys, Father's Day is coming up and instead of getting him a lame hat or some other thing he's not gonna use in two days, how about you get your dad a fixed OBD2 sensor. This sensor plugs right into any car made after 1996 and when that check engine light comes on, Fixed will let you know exactly what's going on in your car in super easy to understand language, AKA English which is great no matter what your knowledge of cars is. Your dad can save time and money by not going to a mechanic every time that check engine light comes on by doing the work himself. And trust me, dads love saving money. And this fixed sensor gives you real-time diagnostic data. It's really fun to look at on your phone. Oh yeah, I didn't even mention, it's Bluetooth. It streams right to your phone, pretty awesome. But the best part is now through Father's Day, you can get a fixed sensor for 25% off just use the code DONUTDAD and use the link below. Thank you, Fixed, and thank you, Dads. Thanks for watching Wheelhouse. I hope you liked this episode. If you did, give us a like. It really helps us out. And consider subscribing. Check out this episode of Wheelhouse right here, and check out this episode of Up to Speed. It's a good one. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Nolan J. Sykes. I'm almost to 20,000 followers. No big deal. Help me out. Be nice. See you next time.